Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildred, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Let's talk about mecha. From the heavier tank-like affairs to the more sleek powered armor, these mechanical titans have been an enduring fixture in popular culture. Naturally, that footprint would veer them into role-playing games. From the enjoyable but heavily frustrating Robotech, fuck you Harmony Gold, the pioneering Mechton Zeta, to the myriad of independent works. One of those independent works is Giant Guardian Generation, a byproduct of TG doing what TG does best, getting things done. GGG draws heavily from the long-running Super Robot Wars series of strategy RPGs. Battle Century G, our subject today, is a successor of this, taking out the material that had come from the SRW series and releasing it as a standalone. While this is hardly the first RPG I've covered involving giant robots, this is the first one that doesn't necessarily have a baked-in setting. How does it hold up? Well, let's find out. At about 208 pages, the game presents itself in a very straightforward manner. While artwork isn't necessarily frequent until the second half, the game wears its mecha influences on its sleeve, the use of font and the writing references of several styles of mecha anime, Gundam and Macross especially. Very rarely did I have a situation where I couldn't find something that I needed. In addition, I appreciate the Let's Review segments near the end of the book. Lastly, an index. Solid work. Much like in Fireborn, character creation is split between the pilot and their mech. We'll be starting with the pilot end of it with Christoph Gates. In the first step, we need to determine a starting power level, the tier of ability for the character. We'll be going with level 1, which means we start with one genre point each session. Secondly, character points. We have 100 points to spend on attributes, skills, and traits, plus an additional 30 from power level. We'll put 5 ranks into the 6 attributes. Fitness, Intellect, Charm, Awareness, Willpower, and Resources. This makes his plot armor 5 for each layer, and a defense of 10. In addition, we'll go with the Humanities and Investigation skills, as well as Common Sense, Danger Instinct, and Jack of All Trades for traits. Third is Genre Powers. While each character gains the same base 6 powers, they may gain additional power for each level. In our case, we'll go with Gotta Go Fast. While there's some narrativist aspects and character themes to address, this covers the bulk of pilot creation. Next is the mecha itself. For our mecha, the Sylphide, we'll be building a high-speed harrying type that excels in in-and-out engagements. Sylphide is generated through mecha points, which are used similarly to character points, even if the expended material is quite different. We still have 130 points to spend. For attributes, we'll go with 5 each in Might, Guard, Threshold, Energy, and Systems, and a 7 in Speed. For upgrades, we'll go with Overbooster and Reliable Thrusters. And for weapons, we'll go with Assault Rifle and Beam Saber. This results in a threshold of 5 for each mech layer, as well as a defense of 10, much like the pilot. Character creation is very, very simple. Far simpler than it could have been since it's all built around character and mecha points. But for me, that's a double-edged sword. I've never really been a fan of that style of universal pools, and prefer separate ones for each aspect of creation, i.e., one pool for attributes, one pool for skills, one pool for abilities, etc. That said, I do really enjoy the simple usage of sample spreads and categorizing powers, upgrades, and so on based on broad themes. It helps them avoid a trap that often can occur with these sorts of freeform systems, where the choice can get overwhelming. Point issues aside, it's a fine setup that only gets complicated with some of the supernatural traits. At least there's no point by insanity here. Battle Century G uses a D10 system, essentially D10 plus modifiers versus a target number. Sometimes a roll might have advantage or disadvantage, in which case you roll an extra D10 and take the higher or lower respectively. Unlike similar games that use that mechanic, both sides can stack, essentially making it more akin to the boons and banes that Shadow of the Demon Lord uses rather than advantage and disadvantage in D&D 5th. One of the most common ways to gain either is in skills, which typically add one. Oddly, this applies to specialist versions of a skill as well, likely to offset the fact that specialization skills only cost 5 CP instead of 10. Much like how 13th Age has Escalation die to increase the danger of lengthy conflicts, Battle Century G has Tension, which starts at 1 and is increased by 1 each round. This Tension acts as a bonus to tests made to harm. When it comes to damage, characters in Mecha have a layered system, but it works slightly differently for each. 
For pilots, whenever they lose a layer, they must roll a willpower check based on that layer. Failing that roll results in instant defeat. In the case of Mecha, that mech suffers a main. The target rolls a d10 to determine who chooses which area is going to be maimed, odd for defenders and even for attackers, but regardless, the maimed area has any attached weapons and upgrades disabled. While this might indicate high lethality, it doesn't come across as much due to the fact that weapons don't have a set damage. Damage is purely based on the difference between attack roll plus tension and the target's defense. Ultimately, it makes time the more dangerous factor in combat. The only part I've seen contention with is the zone system. Unlike the battle zones in Unchained Heroes, the zones here seem to be akin to a grid or hex, but not entirely. That'd be fine if they put in some sort of sidebar for theater of the mind style engagements, but there isn't, at least not to the same degree. That said, I do appreciate that the game makes the pilot matter. After all, two different pilot builds might use the same mecha differently due to their usage of traits and powers. The map thing is the one aspect I could see getting house ruled, as well as possibly some cap on threshold so things don't get too ridiculous in a longer encounter. Because of Battle Century G's customization, it's easy to compare it to Mechton Zeta, even if it's not entirely fair. As much as I like that one, and it will get covered eventually, I won't deny that Mechton can be very intimidating with the amount of points to customize. Battle Century G is a nice middle ground of being highly customizable, but not being the same degree of crunch. If it's got any drawbacks, I feel it could use some element of risk a la criticals or extra effort, something to make rolls matter more than just the final number. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention its follow-up expansion, Battle Century Z. While it's a grab bag of expanded material, some of its new rules like combination are an ideal fit for those who want to get their symmetrical docking in their games. It also has a degree of support if the game's inclination is a bit more magical than supernatural a la Escaflone or Aura Battler Dunbine. Bottom line, this is a game that is wholly in pursuit of exploring its mecha influences, and because of that, I can give it a stamp of strongly recommended. I would add a caveat that if you get the game, I'd recommend getting both Battle Century G and Z together, in order to expand your potential beyond the Gundam-esque experience. However, if you're into more grounded mecha, this entry probably won't be for you. Personally, I would be very willing to run this with a bit of house ruling in order to fit my style. After all, we all dig giant robots. Stay frosty.